Bucktail. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. So I don't know if the whole opening packages thing is is what you guys want to see, but every once in a while I get cool stuff. Okay, I, I'm a very very blessed guy. I get cool stuff. So I've been in contact with a guy by the name of Rich Strollis. You might have heard of him. Ties one or two flies a year. You know, just just Rich Strollis. He's, he's he's building his YouTube channel. He's working on it. He actually just dropped a video. It was really good. Um, him and I were actually texting tonight about his next video, and it's going to be a good one, by the way. Um, but for for me helping his for, with his YouTube questions, he sent me a package. And it's like... I lost my pocket knife. So... Rich. Oh, and some hand tied Rich Strollis flies. You know, might have said some stickers. Oh. Brian, thanks for the help with the lights and YouTube. See you soon, Rich Strollis. How many people just get a package from Rich Strollis out of the clear blue sky? That's crazy. Uh, Rich, thanks, man. Um, I'm always here to help. Always. I will link Rich's YouTube channel in the description below. Subscribe and watch because he's actually going to teach you something whereas I just kind of do stuff. Poke my finger with hooks and glue it back together. And So I was recently a part of the 2020 Dally's Ozark Fly Fisher Streamer Love Fest. You might have seen video where Matt Grayeski, that's how you say his name by the way, it's not Grajewski. Who knew? I didn't know. He, but he, he stole my camera and proceeded to make cinematic gold. <laughs> <laughs> Fly fishing the Ozarks just got improved. We have a new uh, director, producer, creative genius. This guy is old news. Whenever I think of, of materials that I just really, really like, bucktail will always be in like the top three. It's very versatile. It does so much. You can use it in so many different ways. Um, you can use it for so many different flies. It, it is it is a really really versatile product. So while while him and I are having this conversation, he's he's asking some questions about bucktail and 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 what how I use it in different ways and everything like that. And I started thinking, well, you know, I'm just gonna make a video on bucktail. So here we are. So in my eyes, the the only way to start talking about bucktail is to, is to talk a lot about like the anatomy of bucktail. I probably could use the better word for bucktail rather than anatomy. So in all seriousness, all bucktails are a little bit different. Every bucktail that you get is going to be just a little bit different than the next one. Um, it, it, fibers are different, just different things. This is another one of those products that you always need to get it out of the bag. Go to your local shop, get it out of the bag. Feel the material, feel it, go through it. If it's all funky and if, if the hide is all twisted and stuff like that, put it back. Get a different one. Trust me on this. Okay, so the vast majority of the time, you can break bucktail down into like thirds. The top third is not gonna flare much at all. Some of it doesn't flare at all. You'll get some bucktails that'll flare just a little bit, but it's this, this third, is not gonna flare very much at all. This middle portion is like this happy medium of, of really good flare, but not too much flare to where it's just, you're basically spinning deer hair anyway. This is the portion we use way more than the, for, for big flies, most of the time. This portion down here, very flary, flary. <laughs> No. This portion down here, it flares a lot. This is 
this is borderline deer hair. Deer hair. I mean, of course it's deer hair. This is borderline like body hair. Like if you if you cut this and decide that you're gonna spin a deer hair head, you can do it with the base of the bucktail. And even sometimes up in here. Okay, so cut them into thirds. There's different flies that you can tie for each of the thirds. So like my first instinct, whenever I start to talk about the different flies that you can cover, the, you know, your top third is kind of clouser minnows. You don't want to tie a clouser minnow that's really flared out. Then you get something that's you want very little flare on a clouser minnow, um, uh, like rudder tails, what I call a rudder tail, and, and you see Gunner Bramer use them a lot, um, is, would be this top third section, sometimes going down in toward the top of the second third, but um, those those rudder tails where it's, it's a stiff uh, rear section on a fly, instead of putting marabou on there, if you put a rudder tail on there, you'll get some different kick. Um, but but this portion not gonna flare clouser minnows so the middle portion this is the portion that I use more than any other part of the, the bucktail uh, this is your double deceiver area this is your happy zone on your double deceiver area this is your happy zone on the flare and and how much flare you can get out of it and how much flare you can force it to do but you can take away the flare we're gonna go over all this stuff this this zone down here you can you get into more like your Buford area your your musky flies um, Chad Johnson ties his sluggo out of uh, more along the lines of this end uh, stuff like that so you you can you can tie it 50 50 and still have these long fibers and then have like a spun deer hair head and and it's great it, they push a lot of water it's a really good portion to do something like that with. Your bucktail. So I think to really show you um, exactly how all this stuff kind of works and then the flare that you'll get from certain parts, we're just going to put it in a vise and go from there. First of all, whenever I'm tying with bucktail, I'm a big fan of the Uni Big Fly Thread. It's actually like 400 denier. It's pretty stout stuff. Kind of mean. It will bulk up real quick on you, so fair warning, but. Um, if I'm really gonna be cranking down on something, I really like this stuff. I'm just not the biggest fan of gel spun because I, I like a little bit of stretch and I like to be able to, to do that and, and, and I feel like whenever I use gel spun, I, for some reason it doesn't work for me very well and I get, a, I get hair that wants to spin. That's just me though. Yeah, gel spun's just as good as this. So just like with any material that comes on a hide, whenever you cut it, you wanna clear cut it. Yeah, which means you want to cut it directly off of the hide. Put your scissors as close to the hide as you possibly can and then make a cut. Another thing with anything that comes off a hide is you want to clear all the under fur out for sure. Even bucktail has under fur and, and some nasty little fibers and, and stuff like that. You want to make sure all that stuff is out. So this is what I end up with. I cut this off the very top of the bucktail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin my thread. That gives me, whoa. I'm gonna spin my thread to give me more control where it lands and how much tension I put on it where it where I can really crank it down. So what I'm gonna do is literally just show you how much flare you'll get out of this. So I'm gonna put a couple wraps on here and then really crank down on it, okay? This is really crank down on it. You see? Very little flare, very little flare at all. Now to show you the exact other end of the spectrum, literally. I cut this off of the base down here. So, so this is gonna be exactly the opposite. Okay, so we're gonna tie this in. I'm gonna leave a little bit right here just to kind of show you the difference. Watch, boom. That's basically spun deer here. Or stacked deer hair, right? Yeah, big flare. This hair comes from that happy place, right here. So this is like the mama bear zone, right? So what we're gonna get with this portion right here is is something in between, a little bit of flare, but not as much as the tail. 
See, a little bit of flare. Nowhere near the flare that we got on the base. Good flare. One of the biggest problems I see with people that um, either have questions for me or you know they wonder what's going on or what I just kind of see people struggling with is reverse tying bucktail like for your double deceivers and stuff like that number one we're gonna use the happy zone portion of the bucktail the mama bear portion so I've just tied like a slop and tail and like polar chenille body just to pretty it up a little bit it is what it is so when we reverse tie this what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna force this material to stay on top of the hook. I don't want it to spin around the hook. This is this is just like the deer hair video. So we're gonna stack it. I just air quoted with three fingers. So we're gonna stack it on top of the hook. We want it to stay on top of the hook. Now where we start our thread means everything. Okay? My thread is directly behind the eye of the hook. Directly behind it. If I start right there and I make my first wrap from there to the other side of the eye of the hook, I know I'm not going to go past that. So I'm not going to crowd the eye. And then on the other side of things, if I start the thread way back here, I'm probably going to have all this open bare hook that just wasted as well. So if I start my thread directly behind the eye of the hook, I always know I'm okay because I won't go past that. So before we, before we put anything on, we're going to spin our thread again. We're going to spin our thread again. We want it to cord up. My first wrap is going to be no pressure. No pressure on it. But see, I went straight back to the eye of the hook. Second wrap, I'm going to put up some pressure on it and flare it a little bit. I'm going to work my thread back now toward the, toward the bend of the hook. This flared bucktail back here is your friend. So we're gonna, we're gonna trim a little bit off of it. But as I trim, my, my scissors are gonna go straight up, straight up and down, boom. Just like that. This hump is gonna save the whole head. So again, same thing on the bottom. So now I have a really nicely flared portion of bucktail that's over the eye of the hook. It's ready to be reversed. What we keep talking about is this shoulder right here that now goes all the way around the hook. Whenever we reverse tie this and all the bucktail ends up covering this, if we know we put our thread back on this spot right here, it's not gonna slip over it. It can't slip over it. All of these wraps are right at the breaking strength of the thread. I can't stress that enough. If you're not flirting with breaking your thread all the time, even this 400 denier thread, you are not tying tight enough, period. So I'm gonna kinda just kinda work this stuff around and just kinda get it all nice and even and pretty. I'm gonna use this hole to reverse the bucktail for me. Now, you can use a Bic pin, you can use whatever you wanna use, you can use your hands, but it's a little bit easier to use a tool. At this point, I have some cleaning up I'm gonna have to do, okay? So if I push my fingers on the front of this and like force those fibers back, everything will tighten up and everything will be good. Now my thread is still hanging directly below that middle ground where all that thread was and it's right dead in the middle of it. So if I make a perfectly round wrap right over this. I know I'm not going to be going too far back. If I go too far back, this is this is the head I'm going to end up with. Everybody's seen it. Nobody wants it, so don't do that. <laughs> so I'm going to spin my thread. I'm going to make a fairly loose wrap, just kind of grabbing everything. Two loose wraps, fairly loose wraps kind of grabbing everything, knowing everything's in place, right? So I've got two wraps on there. I'm gonna crank on it now and get that flare that I want.
When I get to this point and, I, and I've got all the thread tension I can have on there, I don't want to let off the thread tension with this hand. I want to keep my thread tension and pull some thread out, hold my thread tension. You can see me pulling on, on that. And then whip finish directly over the wraps that we just made. So we have a really nicely shaped fly. Um, it, and it's super easy. You're not getting that bullet head that you see so much whenever people mess up on these things. And it all depends on where that thread lands. Didn't crowd the eye because I knew where my thread was the whole time. If you start directly behind the eye of the hook and you know that's there, then you have a go no-go zone and you don't go past that you, then you know everything you need to know so you don't crowd the eye. So another way to use bucktail is to flare it and to forcefully flare it using the bottom portion of the bucktail. And this is this is something like a Buford or like a, a Sluggo, like a Chad Johnson Sluggo. That, that's kind of what you would use it for. What I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to start my thread right back here. I'm going to go ahead and spin it. We're gonna spin this. We're gonna literally spin this around the hook. Okay? So what we wanna do is to make a loose wrap and a second wrap, and then let it walk around the hook and spin. Just exactly like body hair or belly hair, something like that. Okay? So, I'm gonna come through here, just barely moving the thread forward. And then, okay. So at this point, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put another stack. But what I can do here with this second stack, since I don't need the tips, I can go ahead and cut those tips off and it's nice to have a good pair of razor scissors too so I'm gonna spin this I'm gonna do the exact same thing use my trusty half inch tool And then, and then at this point, you're literally, you can literally trim this out. You can use a, you can use a razor, you can use whatever you want. So you'll end up with something that's got a super pushy head and then nice taper to it, good stuff. So whether it's spinning or stacking or reverse tying or whatever, bucktail is, is easily one of my top three favorite materials. Uh, you get so much swim out of it, it's bulletproof. I use the word bulletproof way too much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in check. And the, the amount of colors is endless. Like, literally, you, you, saw me dump, you saw me dump this out earlier. But like, the, the amount of colors is, is endless. And you can dye your own. And I mean, it's just, it's crazy. So, do yourself a favor. Get good at bucktail. It's not only double deceivers. You can do single deceivers and little smallmouth flies and, and anything. Clousers, just anything. Bucktail is phenomenal material that every fly tire should be at least proficient at. That stinks. Now I'm going to smell like bucktail. Because all of them be.